Welcome to coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Men Soccer Championships. Tonight from Steubenville Franciscan University, we feature the Bethany Bison, the number five seed against the host, the number two seed, the Franciscan University Barons. With Kevin Zolmanski, Bob Workwis on the PAC Sports Network. As we get these two uh, rival schools, not very much distance, Kevin, between these right. two schools. They get here. Franciscan had a bye. Bethany had to play their way in with a couple of victories. The Bison are here. Franciscan gets the host, their first ever time in the PAC championship hosting this tournament, this championship match. Yeah, only the second year as a member of the PAC, and now they're hosting the uh, championship match after <clears throat> defeating Chatham 1-0, or I'm sorry, Westminster 1-0 earlier this week to have the right to host this. It's uh, I think the bigger surprise is the victory by Bethany defeating the top seed Grove City by a score of 2-1 to one up at Grove City. Grove City was the one seed. They would have been in line to host this match against if you would have went just by chalk. And I would have been uh, Grove City hosting Franciscan in a 1-2 matchup. But here we are. Bethy comes in and winning four in a row, seven of eight. They finished the season five and four overall in the PAC. Six, nine, and three was their overall record. Goals four in the conference, 15. Goals allowed, 14. Uh, they had a road record, Bethany did, of 5-3-1. So you see they played pretty well on the road. But if you look at their roster with a lot of international players, you would think that they would play well on the road because they're kind of in a foreign country and, and used to being away from home. Bethany, 9-7-1, 5-3-1 away from home. 11-5 for Franciscan. They're 6-2 and two here at home at Trinity Health System Field, so they played quite well. These two teams played on October the 2nd. That was a 4-2 win for Franciscan University. But you mentioned Bethany's been pretty hot yeah. kind of since that loss. Ladies Four in a row. and gentlemen, welcome Let's to the Let's pick up the PA announcements. Conference. We'll get Men's us through the pregame and the starting game. lineups here from Franciscan University. Between the visiting Bethany Bison and your Franciscan University Barons! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for an opening prayer, followed by the national anthem and starting lineups. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, we offer you this night, this night that you have given to us, for these teams together to come together to compete. We pray that you would e help each of these athletes to compete to your honor and glory, and bless all of us as we cheer them on. Lead and guide all here to come closer to you in all things, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Making their way to midfield while well, the national anthem and the starting lineups and get you set for PAC men's soccer championship action tonight. dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail at 
the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the All right, fans, let's meet the starting lineup first for the visiting bison. Number four, Valentin Ursino. Number 10, Modu Fay. Number 11, Arnold Fontes Candida. Number 14, Jazino Ogaro. Number 16, Lucas Puebla. Number 17, Sheldon Christian. Number 20, Ramiro Vega. Number 23, Sebastian Arocane. Number 38, Jezeba James. Number 44, Fausto Gianchetti. And in goal, Number one, Addis Sahelovic. And now it's time to meet the starting lineup for your parents! Number three, Chris St. George! Number nine, Mikey Irvin! Number 10, Sebastian Kohler. Number 14, John Schreiner. Number 16, Ryan Miller. Number 18, Josh Atkinson. Number 19, Nick Miller. Number 20, Joe St. George. Number 21, Leo Nagel. Number 22, J.P. Bobak. And in goal for the Bears, you know who he is. Number one, Jax Mato. They're starting 11 for the Bison and for the Barons. Head coaches for these two. Schools at a Scott Ridenauer. He's in his first year leading Franciscan University. He coached at Ohio Northern University for 21 seasons, seven conference championships in the OAC, eight regular season titles, nine NCAA bursts. Coach Ridenauer was the runner-up with Ohio Northern in 2012, Sweet 16, 2011, the Elite Eight. 
in 2008. It's been since 2008 through 19 that the Barons were in the AMCC, where they reached the semifinals three times, four playoff appearances there. They are 7-5-2, and two, including Fans, three straight shoot. wins against Bethany in their history. And they're 5-1 and one at home against Bethany. Last time Bethany won was September of 2018. Frankie Tall's in his third season, 15 wins, five years an assistant at Bethany. Five PAC soccer titles, five NCAA Division III bursts. Also coached the women's soccer program at Bethany for a year, 16 seasons at North Carolina Wesleyan as an assistant and as a head coach as well. Bethany in the green and white. They're going to move right to left. The homestanding white with the gold numerals. We are field level, so we'll try to keep up best we can with the action. Glad you're aboard the PAC Sports Network. Franciscan and Bethany. Kind of a cool venue here at Trinity Health System Field. Across the way, there are students who are fans on the hillside. And as the it's twilight is ending, we're getting into nighttime, you can see them silhouetted in the gray sky. So kind of a neat venue across the way. The stands are across the way. They're filled, and people are along the fence, it's filled. So a good crowd here tonight at Franciscan. And again, makes sense because Bethany is just across the river in West Virginia, just over 15 miles away, so kind of territorial rivals. Did you think see my first touch right there? I got a first touch. Pitch it's good. Up. I'm ready to roll now. <clears throat> and the place you want to be is where the smoke is emanating. That is the grill with the food section, so we set the scene. We'll be good on throw-ins right in front of us. Ramiro Vega had it, lost it. This will be a touch for Franciscan. Ryan Miller. It's my second touch. I'm doing well here. Pass off the mark for Joe St. George. Well, I think, Bob, we're seeing, we talked to Coach um, Tall from Bethany, and he mentioned that Franciscans, they like to attack down the flanks, and we're seeing them coming down this right side early on in this match a couple times, and, and the long ball over the top after the opening kick. Also said that he thinks his squad is dangerous on the attack. That ball rolled in. There's the first touch. And sliding out to make that play. Jax Matone, the junior keeper for Franciscan. He's in the red kit, black shorts. The other end, it is Addis Salahovic. He's a sophomore keeper from Dallas, Texas for Bethany. He's in the purple kit, the black. A little bit too <clears throat> far in front on that pass there, that fast pitch on this turf, not grass. So you're going to get a nice bounce and roll. We saw that one go out. We're going to have a throw here right in front of the Bison bench. That's been... Uh, Jazeba James, who's a sophomore midfielder, he's from Antigua. As we progress, there is a serious international connection. Great shot coming down the left side for Fontes Candida. He fired it wide of the far post, but the first good opportunity from about 15 goes by the wayside, but it comes off the foot of a Bethany Bison. That was a good one-two played in right back to him. He went with the left footer, tried to sneak it in that. That far post and missed it wide, and we're going to get the first uh, goal kick here from Matone. <clears throat> that's deflected, and that's a good read by Jax Matone to come out. The net is empty in the chip from distance over top the frame. I believe that came off the foot of Sheldon Christian. Yeah, trying to take advantage of the aggressive play of Matone. Well, Coach Tall said they like to play out of the back. And, uh, well, that time... Right now, they went short, and they put there was a lot of pressure on Franciscan deep in their own end, and that one came out, and they tried to go up over and just drop it in there. It's a little bit over the bar. They go short again. Coach Ridenhauer is right to our right. You can hear him tell the, the switch, the, the backs there, right. and another steal by Bethany. The two center backs switch sides for that restart on the goalkeeper. The back heel. Vega got that steal, and here's a chance coming down the near side. That's played away. We're going to our first corner of the game. It's going to favor Bethany to our right on the near side flag. And it will be the junior midfielder, Ramiro Vega, to start this set piece for Bethany. Bisons have six attackers, five actually lined up, one at the goal, and three on the right side of the box. There goes the motion. There goes the centering feed. That's defended nicely by Franciscan. Defender on the post, able to easily clear it. They went with kind of a low curl. That was Josh, Josh Atkinson, the freshman. 
Trying to get someone running to that near post. And you get the action, all kind of action. We get a foul to free kick for Bethany. And again, it's going to be Vega, the junior. He's from Buenos Aires. That's going to be a theme that you'll have as we progress. He's going to approach it from the free kick with the right foot. He'll bend it into the box over the head of one of his fellow teammates, and it'll be another goal kick for Franciscan. Heads, heavy presence of Argentines on this Bethany roster. We were talking to Coach Tall about it early on. I kind of think of two things when you mention Argentina. I'm thinking of football, soccer, and Jimmy Cherry. I think of football, or football in this case, and soccer, and the statue of Jesus in Rio de Janeiro. Well, that would be Brazil. So you You're right. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. No Brazilians here. You're right. But no surprise here when we coach, we're talking with Coach Tall. This ball played into the box, and Matone's going to play. He said to us, can you guess which is my favorite team? Yes. It turns into be Argentina. There are 15, 16 players on this roster from Argentina. There's the first pressure for Franciscan. That is played nicely top of the box near the arc, but Franciscan works it to the left side. That's cleared away. Back towards midfield. Finds the toe of Ryan Miller. Ryan and Nick Miller brothers on this team. Uh, there are two Fairmonte brothers, Joe and Justin, and two St. George brothers. Chris is in the starting lineup with his brother Joe. First play of the game for all, Addis Salahovic. The sophomore from Dallas, Texas. Salahovic is a 12th start of the year. He's got a 145 goals against average. 742 save percentage, 46 saves, one shutout. Made six saves against Chatham earlier in the playoffs and three saves against Grove City in the semifinals. Viega on the touch. He'll drop it back to uh, good switch. Modu Fai will switch field to the far side. Coach Tall talked about possessing it, moving it around side to side, looking, looking to, to attack the seams and see some channels, and they're seeing it here right now, the possession. That was Vega. I worked it back to Arrow Kane. Told us that Arrow Kane and Fai, two of their best players, along with Salahovic in the net. There's a good through ball, good run by Mikey Irvin down the right side. Well defended, though, by Full the back. outside backs. And that's going to be a foul or a throw for Bethany. I believe that defensive play was made by James, I think, was back there. So there's a midfielder. Yeah, Tough he, low angle, but the good thing yeah, is we're close to the benches, so close you, to the you're action. probably going to hear that chatter going on, which is good. Adds a nice aspect to this coverage. Fausto Gionchetti, his first touch. He's from Buenos Aires, center midfielder, the freshman. <clears throat> Bethany attacks, and that's going to be defended, though, by Franciscan. And again, another touch for Mikey Irvin, the senior. He's the local boy from Steubenville, Steubenville Central Catholic. Has passed, though, off the mark, off the foot of John Schreiner. He's an Ohio native. That's going to be a throw for Bethany. Player knocked down, no foul. Arrow Kane was knocked down. Bethany reverses field. It was Ryan Miller who goes to the far side. Bethany works towards the middle, and they'll reset at the logo for Franciscan back to the D. And Coach Tall said that they'll play back the front. Joe St. George there, and they'll organize, and you mentioned it already, that they play on the Flanks says we're in the ninth minute of play. He said they're very direct. So we saw that the ball over the top that was well defended on the by the left uh, fullback. But early on they went over the top too. Good ball, Irvin. Shot, good save. Near post, right hand by Salahovic. A great denial there. And stays scoreless. Good test. Great right-footed strike on the right side for Mikey Irvin. Yeah, nice job by Salahovic. I'm not sure if that would have went wide, but he stuck out that left hand and knocked that wide of the cage. He can't take the chance, too, with right. scoring opportunity for Premier Real Estate like that. It's really their first dangerous opportunity inside the 18 box. We got a foul, so we're going to get a 
throw from the near side. Or a free kick, excuse me. I'm just working like a corner position. They put up a two-man wall. Here comes the late arrival. St. Well George. Dissected well here. Red, and here comes the counter with Eric Kane. He's on the move. He got an overlap. Good drag. He stops. He's going to go to the middle of the field, but that's defended by Franciscan. Nice job back there by Chris St. George. Oh, that was a wild attempt at a of high volley there. And now the Barons are going to be on the possession looking to get in the 18. That's a good little short pass. Going to cut into the middle. And that's defended nicely by Bethany. It was a good two-man game. One of those players was Schreiner. And Schreiner's teammate on the two-man game was J.P. Boback. Boback was... He's got 10 points, three goals, four assists. Oh, good playoff. Oh. Good opportunity for Bethany and tight. That was been a, another great opportunity. Lucas Puebla the, playing the, the holding forward position. He had his back to the defender, and he laid it off nicely for the right footer. Tried to slot it inside the, the left post there. It was well done by the Bison in terms of organized attack and movement. I like the way the Bison are moving here in the green kits. Puebla from Mendoza, Argentina. They defended one, and they quickly counter. That ball's played away. Nice crowd here tonight. Bethany already in a championship match today. The Bison, the girls' volleyball team, but they fell to Westminster three sets to none. This Franciscan will reverse. Good turn, good turn. Still coming. They drop it off. Shot from distance, misfired by Boback. Boback, by the way, a second. All time at Franciscan in points with 71. Had a great opportunity there, but fired it high and wide. It'll be a goal kick for the Bison. Three shots for Bethany. Towards the cage, not on the frame. The only shot Salahovka's face. They did credit that shot on goal on the near side, Kevin. So he's got one save. It'll be a near side throw and on the near touch line. As we're in the 12th minute of play. Ball to flex up in the air. Hurricane with the head, but he falls down. Kohler was there. He's a grad student, and Hurricane is actually hurt after that header. I think he collided a little bit with Kohler. And he's down in a heap. We're in the 12th minute, so we're going <clears> to <throat> have our first break. They're going to come over with water, water break. I mentioned Bethany's going for their 30th soccer championship here tonight. 31st. Or Correct, 31st. They've won 30. So how about this streak? So they won five in a row from 70 to 74, and then a pair in 76 and 77, Kevin. 23 straight years. They won or share the title from 79 through 01. Just fantastic stuff right there. But 2001 has been their last appearance. So it's been 20 years since that great stretch for the Bison. And Franciscan mentioned that they are new to the conference. They're just becoming a full-time member to the PAC after playing in the AMCC. Coach Rodenhauer, by the way, 315 wins. Can you turn my level down and bring his up a little bit? Thank you, Mitch. Hurricane is up and coming off the pitch, dragging his leg behind him. So we'll have to see if yeah, if he's able to return. Could be a big loss for Bethany. They're seeing your midfield with three goals, two assists on the year. Had a goal and assist against Grove City in the semifinals and also had an assist against Chatham. We should get the drop restart here. Got the big international flavor mentioned. 16 players, or 39 players who are rostered for 
Bethany, 16 from Argentina. 29 international. This is, you talk about the international game. This is it here. Antigua, they're eight from Antigua. One each from Spain, Granada, Ethiopia, Bolivia, Italy, and Senegal. We asked him how how does he get these players. We were talking to assistant coach, um, what is it, Christopher. Chris Gordon. Chris Gordon. And uh, he mentioned that Coach Tall does a lot of camps. And so, you you know, through those camps, he makes a lot. Internationally. Right, camps internationally. And he makes some contacts. And then those contacts kind of give him some leads and some players that maybe can't qualify for whatever reason at the higher levels. And then he brings them here and they can stay or they can cycle through for a year and then move on. Pedro Chalemi is in for the midfield position, also from Buenos Aires, replacing Hurricane. That ball was played away off to the far side. And He's continuing the international. Coach Tall is from Africa. Chris Gordon is from New Jersey via Haiti. And Coriopolis played his college soccer at Robert Morris. And Thomas Noveria, who's the student assistant for Bethany, is from Argentina. There's a good opportunity, middle of the pitch for Chilemi. He fires the right footer way high and wide, but another good opportunity. Bethany, none of the shots, Kevin, on frame, but right. they've had good opportunities. Well, Ch- 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 Chilemi has entered, and he's been firing. He had a couple that have gone high and wide off the outside of the right boot. That's four shots for Bethany, and they steal. Modu five, he'll fire, save, and... Having to readjust and gather the rebound in was Jax Matone. Matone is 17th start. He's played in every game for Bethany. He's played all but 89 minutes. As it goes against average of 140, which is second in the conference. 92 saves, also second. And a save percentage of 814, first in the conference for Jax Matone. Five shutouts, tied for second. He made seven saves against Westminster in the semifinals. Good step over into space right in front of us, Joe St. George. His through ball up the near side. They'll attack right goal line centering feed. is denied, and we get a whistle and a foul, I believe. Foul call. That was a good run and a good pass to Schreiner. And we're going to get another free kick for Franciscan and good opportunity. Well, the outside back for the Bison, Jezebe James, he came flying up the left side. Trying to get involved with the attack, and then the turnover left them exposed on the back line. They only had two center backs to defend there, and the Barons quickly went down that right side and got into the attack. They're going to have a, a kick here just outside the 18. That'll be Nick Miller as they move the wall back. Over the wall, two rear facing and one forward facing. Now two forward facing. Well, the rear face is just communicating with the goalie yeah, and moving the line and then they'll turn it'll be the senior nick miller on the free kick be aware of joe st george arriving late here in front oh. headed just wide of the near post great diagonal cut it's actually defended by bethany it's going to result in a corner kick that was an opportunity taken by kohler sebastian kohler made a nice run it was well defended so we're going to go right back to this side with a corner near side corner Flag to her right. They'll bend it to the opposite side. There's another header up in the air. And skying up in the purple was Addis Salahovic denying the Shriner attempt. And Bethany withstands the free kick and the corner kick. Franciscan Barons, they got the header on the corner. It went to the turf. And then someone was able to put it on net from there. It went high. So it wasn't a lot of power behind that one. They're looking for a foul or a card yeah, right there. They're going to foul on... Jayzeba James, as he fouled Mikey Irvin, and that's a free kick. Um, right to our right, 10 yards away. It'll be Nick Miller. <laughs> Nick Miller from Galena, Ohio, Olentangy High School. He'll try to bend it towards the near post, and reading it, coming over to his left to make that stop is Salahovic. That was just a high floater with backward rotation. That would have been an excellent field goal attempt, but just too easy for Salahovic right there to to catch it and put it back into play for the Bison. Bethany trying to work the right flank to Vega, but that's off the mark. 
And it'll be a throw for the Barons in their own zone. Into the 17th minute. Liam Nagel, the senior. It's from Manassas, Manassas, Virginia, Seton High School. Big, tall, rangy defender at 6'2". Bethany gets a quick steal. They're going to work it in touch to the left side, but no one's home, with the exception of Irving going back for Franciscan. Wanted to try to maybe work a throw, but he had to play it. And now the Barons will work it up on the near side. And Schreiner wins that in space, and he's got the on-rushing Kohler. Kohler is knocked down, but it'll be a throw for Franciscan. The ball headed away. They play the air ball, finds the foot of Joe St. George. Middle of the field. Comes Franciscan. That ball played to the opposite side. Kohler played it over there. Looked to be Schreiner over there on the attack. Actually, it wasn't Schreiner. It was Boback. J.P. Boback. Defended and then turning and blasting it away is Puebla for Bethany. And that is chipped out of bounds with a far side throw in for the Bison. It's where the 18th minute of play. We remain scoreless between Bethany College and Franciscan University. Ball played at midfield. And tip forward by Chilemi. And now moving right side, a little chip pass off the mark. Good opportunity there by Arnold Fontes Candida, the sophomore from Senegal. And it'll be a midfield throw in for Valentin Ur- Ur- Ursino. No, he's going to defer to James. But James is going to take the throw back. You don't often see the throw back towards your own goal. Like gives him goal. a chance to play it for him with a boot instead of the throw. Right. A steal for Franziskan, middle of the field. Uh, St. George tried to come right side. That's defended by Bethany. And on the ball for the Bison, Modu Fai. Chipped away in the midfield by Franciscan. They're going to slide it to the near side. That was a neat piece of skill as that one came down to kick it completely sideways. Bethany reverses. Puebla, Puebla in the middle of the field, but can't find Vega. But on the ball is Gianchetti. Oh, nice. Slides it to James. He'll left foot across, and that's defended. And then chipped in the air and away by Franciscan defensively. Well played on the back line by the Barons. That was a handball. Joe St. George, and now a handball is whistled against Franciscan. Five will come to James. Chilemi is in. Again, we've seen Sebastian Arakane leave with an injury for Bethany. He's yet to return. Oh, good burst right here down the left, right side. Arakane is icing his right ankle. Back to the ball. I believe that's a, no, it's not a Garo. I think that's Puebla. No, I think you had it. I think it was. Was it the outer back sneaking up? Yeah, you're right. Good call, Kevin. It was. O'Gara, O'Garo, Jazino O'Garo, sophomore outer back. Coach Tall saying he's very good one-on-one and very adept at moving forward, so that would make sense that he was leading the play on the right flank. Headed away by, I believe it's Irvin. And it was Mikey Irvin. Back to the defensive line, played forward by Orsino. It's hard once that ball gets in the air and the bounces it takes on this turf to get it under control. Very new facilities here. Yeah. Community Health System Field in Steubenville, Ohio. They're continue to build, continue. There are plans to 
further update this facility as Fausto Gianchetti counterattacks. Slide it forward to Puebla. Back to Giancetta. He's got support on the near flank with Fontes Candida. And that'll be a near side throw for James for the Bison. They're going to go back to the midfield to reorganize. That's Sheldon Christian. Leading goal scorer, by the way, for Bethany is Modu Fai. He's got six goals, including two in the playoffs. Leading goal scorer for both squads, Sebastian Kohler. Kohler's got ten, fourth in the PAC with ten goals. Tied for third in the conference with three game winners. Goal kick for Jax Matone. Matone's got a brother. He's the fourth set of brothers on this squad for Franciscan, his brother Jair. Uh, laid off well there, but there goes the, the outside James, back. Left-footed cross, and they're going to have to track it down, Bison will. Fullbacks really active for the Bison. Again, the target forward holding it up, distributing. Oh, that's a hand in the box. And That's a hand that in whistle. the box. We're going to get a, a penalty kick opportunity with a handball in the box. Yeah, it was a heavy first touch. It just kind of ricocheted off his boot, hit him in the right elbow, went down to the turf. It was pretty obvious. So it's going to be an opportunity from the spot for the Bisons, and it looks like it's going to be 10. Eight yards out. That'll be Modu 5. This, interesting enough. This is the 18th match for the, the Bison. This is their first PK opportunity. It will be the sophomore from Dallas, Texas, Modu Five. One on one with Jax Matone to our left. Let's see where he goes after the handball in the box. This in the 23rd minute. Takes a deep breath. Will approach with the right foot. He'll fire. Right sided in. Matone guessed near side. Faye goes far side. one nothing. Bethany. Cool by Bethany, number 10. Fai, Madhu Fai is seventh of the year on the PK. Very calmly. 23rd minute. Yeah, he did take his time to approach that. Substituting in for the Barons, number four, Joseph Garamonti. Five scored a goal in every playoff match so far. One against Grove City, one against Shadow, and now the PK against Franciscan. Modu Five makes it 1 0. Martin guessed low right, his right. Five's left. Five went upper right. And it was a very easy conversion from the spot, and the Bison have a 1 0 lead in the 23rd minute. Ball played in the middle of the field. That's Puebla. Puebla slides it through. An opportunity near side. Can we get another foul in the box? As knocked down was Fausto Vianchetti. Not in the box. It's outside of the box. But it'll be a good free kick opportunity for Bethany. Yeah, it's hard for us to see with all the lines. But that's just right outside the 18. To the left side. Or no, it's going to be a corner. Oh, a corner. Thank you. We both had it wrong. Corner for the Bison. So that's another advantage of being. I think they're, uh, they're third side. corner. Second. Third of the game. It's going to be uh, Vega. Vega. Headed towards the goal. Deflected by the back line. A secondary shot. Fan on. Turn and goal. It found Valentin Arsino. Arsino makes it 2-0. Bison. Well, it was cleared well on the, on the line here by the, the back line defender, but it did not get out of a dangerous area. It was kind of a miss hit, and it right to Ursino, who turned and fired with the right foot and slotted that one home. So the Bison now lead 2-0, to nil, this one in the 24th minute. Valentin Ursino makes it 2-0, 2-0 two two Bison. Number four, Valentin the freshman center back gets his second goal of the year 
drilling it inside the near post on the extended corner. And Bethany, two goals from, in about a minute. From Chascomos, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Just wanted to say that once there, Bob. There's a quick counter by... It's going to be a corner for yeah, the they Barons. Will, they will work a corner out of this. <clears throat> It'll be a far side corner. Hey, watch back post! Back post! So hey, the far really flag ready? across the way, that's Nick Miller, the senior, setting up the set piece. Goes short corner. And they put it into space. Uh, so that was an opportunity. I think it was Irvin. Or it could have been Joe Ferramonte. I think it was Joe Ferramonte. He could have, could have blasted it, but try to put it into space. Isaac Doyle in. Joe St. George will come out for Franciscan. Interesting uh, choice. Instead of putting the right foot swinger into the box or maybe something falls at the feet of the keeper, makes some chaos in the, in the six-yard box. Instead, they go short, and he just has a heavy first touch, and it goes over the back line, and it becomes a goal kick for Sal Holovic. Sheldon Christian, by the way, got the assist on the second Bethany goal, the first one by Fye on the PK in the 23rd minute, or Sino's goal coming in the 24th minute. So big goal in the championship match for the freshman, <clears throat> Valentin Ursino. Now you got to regroup a little bit if you're the Barons. Yeah, you're, it's going to force them to be more on the attack on the front foot. We we, we heard they like to be direct, uh, so but they haven't had a lot of crosses. Here's an opportunity comes down this right side. Joe St. George, we've seen him late arriving in the past. Maybe an opportunity to – he pulls it back to the midfield and lays it off to the left side. And it's on the foot of Isaac Doyle. Doyle, the senior from Oregon. They try to work in. There's a – foul that could be in the box he's gonna say it's just outside the box knocked down with sebastian kohler 19 yards yeah that close to being in the box great opportunity on a free kick for the barons down two nil even even in college if you if you're <laughs> they like they make it easy to go down if you're near the box and put the pressure on the official 27th minute free kick for nick miller So Miller has a team up. He's just outside the box to the left. Not to the corner. Maybe a few yards towards the inside, but great position on the free kick. There goes the motion. He'll strike it with the right foot. Oh, he slides this wide. Not sore if Addis Salahovic got a piece he, he of did. it. He did. Salahovic, I think, got a piece of it. I think that's what the Barons are arguing, but they're saying, no, it's going to be a goal kick. So My mistake. Slide out. So I thought he touched it. Diving to his left. I, it was definitely the the flight of the ball in the rotation was interrupted by something. I thought it was Salahovic that got a piece of it. Somebody had to get it a had touch. Had to be a deflection by Franciscan that said it's going to be a goal kick. They're going to play it low on the ground for possession, and there's a the steal. Two on two, and then just blasted out by Ursino for a corner. Ball in the middle of the field. And Fontes Candida was calling for a handball. It'll be a near side corner. It'll be the third for Franciscan. Nick Miller has been the guy on the set pieces. He'll cross it, had it blocked and cleared. It was a good header. They're calling that there was a handball by the Bison that knocked it. Kept it from going in the net, but there was no call made. It was from getting it through, and again, Fontes Candida was in the middle. He's the one who cleared it away. Not sure if he blocked that shot. Ball up in the air. Trying to attack. J.P. Bobak up with the ball is Salahovic, and he'll throw it to the near side. And good spin and a Excellent turn. Excellent spin. And that's Candida, Fontes Candida. He attacks left side with speed. Lost it, though. He's going to step in, and it'll be cleared away by Josh Atkinson. What a good turn, and then all the way down the pitch until the final third, and he lost it. <clears throat> Definitely played up. They can't clear. Second opportunity by Gianchetti to midfield. Also, fans sitting on the hillside across the way, so great crowd. It's a mild but a chilly fall evening. Temperatures in the 
upper 40s. There's a trip and another free kick opportunity for Francisco. It's the hillside kind of reminiscent of watching the Little League World Series, no? Yeah, that's a good comparison. <clears throat> so it's going to be a free kick about, we're going to say maybe 25, 25 out. Or 25 or 30 out again. It's been the senior, Nick Miller, all conference as a sophomore Miller was. He's Keys in the set piece. He'll drive this one low. And this one deflects wide. And this time, I believe it's a save for Salahovic and will result in another corner for the Barons. Somebody got a nice touch on it in tight, and Salahovic had to make quick movements to make that save right there. So the sophomore from Lake Highlands High School in Dallas, Texas, has been strong in this past few minutes. So Millotrot's left flank, right corner. Headed up by Nagel over top the frame. It goes. Goal kick for the Bison. Good service from Miller that time. Into the 30th minute now. <clears throat> it was good service. They got ahead on it, just having trouble keeping it on frame. And the ones that they are getting on frame, it's just either Salahova getting a, getting a touch to block it wide or a defender as they were right there to kept the Bison off the sheets. Or, I'm sorry, the Barons off the sheets so far. Two goals in this first half so far. Ooh, collision rolled up the back leg. There's enough. Nagel is down for Franciscan. Modu Fai on a PK in the 23rd minute. And Valentin Ursino off an extended corner and assist for Christian for Bethany in the 24th minute. Right side run, open, step in, heading in. Good secondary, good recovery defensively by I think that was uh, defender, Fontes, yeah, Fontes Candida, Candida defending against Joe St. George. St. George is listed as a uh, defender, but maybe because it's 2 0, he's sort of playing. Yeah, you're going to kind of, you're going to have to kind of. Front. He's actually right in front of us now. Be less conservative and throw some so more numbers maybe, forward. Maybe more is a midi. He had a good opportunity there. Made a good move, but a great recovery by Fontes Candida. Good switch again, yeah, but we're still to the left side. The Barons will <clears throat> roll it into Ryan Miller, the younger brother. Left side, just out of the reach. That would have been a nice run. Yeah, a little too much weight on that one. The speed picking up on this turf. That was Kohler. Substitution in for the we had Nick Cross eight, in the Nick senior Cross, four, from Michigan. Nick Cross from Grand Blank, Michigan, and Everest Collegiate Prep. The good thing is we quite certainly know who the subs are. So they're checking in right in front of they're us. They're checking right in front of us. We see the substitutions as they happen. <clears throat> the 32nd minute heading into the 33rd minute. The PAC Men's Soccer Championship 2-0 for Bethany. A goal kick for Addis Salahovic. Salahovic from Lake Highlands High School in Dallas, Texas. That voice you hear to our left is Chris Corden, the assistant coach. He's standing right next to Frankie Tall. Nice conversation we have with two of them. Tremendous international flavor. That just more proof and worth the Division Three level that Soccer is definitely the international game. Coach Cordon told us that a lot of these guys, being from foreign countries, they can't qualify for the upper level, so they come here to play D3 and play for several years before maybe transferring further on. Yeah, I asked them, what do do they do to bring the team together when you have so many different countries and cultures? And uh, he says they pretty much eat every meal together and the traveling. That's kind of how they come together as a team. I, I, I felt really comfortable that I could have been a member of Bethany just hearing that they bond when they're eating. Yeah. <laughs> we but he can, said that's what you do. And they said they play some tournaments where they they go away together, and that usually is how it works. We could fit in off the pitch really well. But as on the pitch, he said he had a young team. So, you know, I asked him, why are they, why are they in such informed 
right now. And he said it just took a while for his young team to come together. But you could see them there today. They're hot. They're quick with they're quick with the ball at their feet. There's a good example right there with Fontes Candida. And a good step over as he moves back to the right. He'll serve it to the middle towards the arc. Really? Cleared away by Franciscan. Yeah, Kevin, they just have two seniors and one junior for Bethany out of the 39 players on the roster. That was uh, Fontes Candida from uh, the Senegal. He's been very active at yeah, both, he, both I mean, ends of the pitch for Bethany. The little bit of flair he had right there at the, the ball at his feet is... As the wind has shifted and out, the grill smoke is now wafting over the pitch. Long through ball over the head of Schreiner. Bethany loses, but a good job to recover and make the block. That was Fontes Candida again. Yeah. Well, that time actually it was number 17. It was Sheldon Christian who has an assist tonight. The smoke should make the uh, Argentines feel bright at home. A lot of, a lot of South Americans, the, the the home crowds, they got the flares and the smoke going, the Bombonera where Boca Juniors play. You see that often. Uh, so a little ambiance for them. We're across the way. You can see in the camera probably. I would feel right at home with <laughs> smelling the grill. That's just a fantastic smell. We're going to get a sub. And, again, we had an injury to uh, Sebastian. Yeah. Sebastian Hurricane is not coming back in. We're going to see a sub, the first sub outside of the injury substitution, Nathan Greaves, who's from Granada. He's a freshman midfielder. They do get a free kick. Jaziba James will bend it. It's going to be headed but wide of the far post. By Bethany, where we'll get Greaves in. More liberal substitution roles in collegiate soccer versus the international game. Nathan Greaves. I like the I like the relaxed substitution rather than the limited substitution. As Rokiba Cordice is going to get set to check in. Coach Tall said that Cordice, who's the sophomore, was honorable mention. Last year as a freshman, he's from Antigua. He checks in. He's got the attributes to potentially be one of the best players in this conference. So that's a nice piece to bring off your bench. Up through the middle here, looking to play it off again. Cordice, big, tall, rangy. Defender at 6'2". That's a foul, a quick restart. They're going to move him back to midfield. I'm going to say this, and you can hear Chris Cordon, who has aspirations of being a D1 head coach. That's a great attribute right there. He's a great communicator. He seems to be the one that's in charge of the defending. Not only was he great communicating with us, us but you can yeah. hear him directing his players on the pitch as well. As we're in the 37th minute. Cordice will for Vega once he gets the opportunity. They can't wait to get in and start running around on this chilly fall night. Ball's dropped back to Gianchetti. It comes back left side to Fausto Gianchetti. That's all I have, 21. Shot save, good left-footed volley struck by Greaves. Had a better save, sliding to his left by Jax Mottone. Keeps it 2-0. So that's why I transferred this over to the stat sheet numbers. Cordes will get in. Cordes in, out will come Vega. A good first half so far for Bethany. Seven Franciscan minutes has, remaining. For Franciscan has had some opportunities as well, Kevin, but no clean opportunities. Yeah, they haven't been quality. We're going to stop time well, now. Salahovic has made four saves. Just one, or it should be two now for Matson. Once it updates. <clears throat> And the wind has shifted again, and I've got 
a little bit of the grill going on over here. So. So the clock was stopped because the player that was coming off the pitch, substituting out, has to come off towards the bench side where we are. And he went off the far side, and the referee explained that you could do that in FIFA, but not in NCAA. He has to come off this side. Yeah, another advantage of being right at midfield for us. He was able to catch that conversation and learn something. FIFA did that to speed it up, you know, the the stalling tactics when they make the substitutions in the last few minutes and they take their time walking off and clap. Nick Ross, his ball in midfield played by Cordice. And now Franciscan will try to organize. He says, we are in the heading towards the 40th minute of play in this first half. Oh, good what a volley. Left-footed play there by Orsino. Well played defensively by the freshman center back who's got a goal. Make sure, hey, Pedro, make sure you're able to go wide too, yeah? This is one of at least, I think, eight players who are from Buenos Aires. Again, keeping it between the center backs, trying to build out from the back. Art of Barons. We were told that they like to go over the top more direct, so a little more possession. They play back to Matzone. They've got two center backs. and The outer backs have kind of slid forward, and they're down two to nothing. So that was Atkinson and Joe St. George. Atkinson playing catch with Joe St. George. And they go DDD once again. And over to an outside back on the left side here. Now we're, he cuts in, looks in the midfield to try to link it up. Does connect, but well marked there by the sub, substitute that just went in for Bethany. Rokiba Cordis, or Rokiba, sorry, Rokiba Cordis. Play forward, and now Cordis has it again at midfield. We'll leave it there. It's been Chalemi who came in for Arrow Kane, and the counter comes for Bethany. A stopping and turning, Puebla. His pass is deflected and defended by Franciscan. Here come the Barons the other way. They try to sneak a through ball. Up the left side, well defended that time by Sheldon Christian. As that through ball attempt was off the left foot of Kohler. And that's St. George. Right in front of us, played by Nick Cross. Good cut in there, lays it off again. <clears throat> Drops it back to Nick Miller. Nice clearance again by the back line of... The Bison. Player falls down. We're going to late whistle as Kohler is fouled. Another free kick. That foul whistled against Fausto Gianchetti. It's in the 42nd minute of play. Again, Nick Miller, the senior. He's got three helpers on the year. Five goals for Franciscan. He's at the right. We're about 25 to 30 out. What's left? What's the attackers left? are to the left at the 18. And a more sneaking up. Ryan Miller, his brother, sneaks up. Nick Miller will fire. Bend oh, and block. Weird. Will be a corner. Salahovic was not happy with his wall. They were not responding to where he wanted them. And they quickly kicked it. And it was knocked away by one of his center backs. Fifth corner for Franciscan. Over the head of S- the keeper, Salahovic, and then Liam Nagel. Check it, it was Cross who fired it over top, and a good opportunity as had a Salahovic, Kevin, kind of misjudged the height yeah. of that corner. For <clears throat> he service. came off his line and went high and just was not able to catch it as uh, Edmund Agre comes in for the Bison. Yep, I agree from uh, Culpeper, Virginia, the junior is hey, in. Ennis, Ennis, let's go up for the last two. Let's go up, last two, let's get out. Let's get out. Be a goal Wait. kick for Addis Salahovic. Down to 2.15 on the clock here, first half. The goal kick. Headed forward by Nagel. Played back, and here comes Bethany. Forward ball from Chalemi. 
defended on the opposite side by Franciscan, by Atkinson. Chalami again works right flank. Another good defensive play from the center back. Assuming that might be Atkinson again. Well, he's back here now. That's a good slide tackle to deny an opportunity for Cordice. Or Agri, excuse me. And now it will be Edmund Agri. Bethany will play back, play back, and they'll work right flank. We're inside of 90 seconds left in the first half. Two, nothing lead for Bethany. Goes by Fai and Ursino. Uh, turnover. That's on the toe of James. Jazebo James back to Cordice. Middle of the field to Fai. Content with possession here as we... Tick down to the final minute of the first half. One minute remaining in the first half. Into the middle of the field for Chilemi. Intercepted by Franciscan. Can they counter and organize late? They've got room. Nice. Nick Cross, right side. He'll step into it. And he gets defended. Nice tackle by Bethany to create a throw on the near touch line. A short throw. They'll move right to left. Another. That's Schreiner, John Schreiner, working to the right goal line. His cross comes out the other side and played away by Bethany with 22 seconds left in the first half. That's going to find the toe of Agri. That goes out of bounds, though, and he falls down. Not enough time to organize as we're at 10, 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. That shot would not have counted. First 45 are in the books. PSA Men's Soccer Championship from Franciscan University. And the Bethany Bison, the number five seed, leading second seeded Franciscan by a score of two to nothing. Bison, the Bison kind of crashing the party here is one of the higher seeds. They've got two goals in the first. 45 minutes, a penalty kick goal by Modu Fai, their sophomore midfielder, the 23rd minute. And then Valentin Ursino, the second of the year. Fai's goal, by the way, was his seventh of the year. 23rd minute, 24th minute, Sheldon Christian had the assist on the second goal for Bethany. And it's a 2-0 lead for the Bison. There you go. There we go. <clears throat> so the PK was taken. It was at 22. 22.30, so 23rd minute. 23rd minute. <clears throat> and that was a minute 15 Modu later. Fai. Yeah, that was a, a good couple minutes for um, the Bison. Just really turned this <clears throat> match on edge for them. Put the uh, the Barons on on notice defensively that they're going to have to come out of their formation a little bit, get a little more aggressive if they're going to, you know, get back into this match. But the PK, the PK was unfortunate defending would for the Franciscan Barons as it was put field. into the box. It was we would like to honor deflected our and then hit the elbow. So the, the penalty President's taken by Modu Fai, twenty third minute, as they are now back to back. Pack champions. They are honoring the, the cross country team the here, Francisco, rather than uh, cold and wet compete Saturday morning. with the PA. We'll just let this they presentation new pack tell that with story. The lowest point total in championship history with 16 points. They also swept all the major individual awards as Liam Galligan was named runner of the year for the fifth time in his career. Connell Delaney was named PAC Newcomer of the Year, and assistant coach Carlo Fabian was named PAC Coach of the Year. Their season is not over yet, as they are running in the NCAA Great Lakes Regional Meet next weekend with hopes of making the NCAA tournament at the end of the month. Please join me in congratulating the 2021 
President's Athletic Conference men's cross country champions with a final round of applause. Some first half statistics. <clears throat> so we have shots on goal, or shots, I should say, excuse me. Shots 10, Bethany 11, Franciscan on goal, four apiece, corners. Two for Bethany, five for Franciscan University. No red cards, no yellow cards. Fouls, seven for Bethany, six for Franciscan. <clears throat> Nobody's been off sides. Four saves for the keeper for Bethany. That's um, Addis Salahovic. And two for the keeper for Fran Franciscan Barons. It's Jax Maltone. And shots faced. 11 shots faced for the keeper for Salhovic for the Bison. 10 shots faced for Matone. That's kind of your team stats, your first half recap here at the PAC Men's Championship match here in Steubenville, Ohio, on the campus of Franciscan University. We saw Coach Reidenauer kind of leak the flanks up on the outer bank on the flanks uh, after they went down 2-0. And he's got 315 wins, actually 317 wins in his career, 306 of those at Ohio Northern University, where he was for 21 seasons. Took over here, first-year head coach at Franciscan, just the second year in PAC competition. They were in the AMCC, the Barons were, from 2008 to 2019. Talked about the long, successful his, history of Bethany, but it's not recent. They're right. trying to go after their... This be their 31st yeah. championship. That's still quite a bit. First since 2001. They had 30, including 23 straight. One or shared from 79 through 2001. Well, Franciscan University is going to climb back into this one. <clears throat> they're going to have to do a little bit better in the final third. Um, they're getting some opportunities. We mentioned the corners. Got to credit the back line that has done some nice job clearing those uh, balls that found their way into the box. And Salhovic has done well coming off his line a few times. He's got he's been able to uh, track down some of those passes in the air. So that's kind of where Franciscan's going to have to improve if they're going to close this deficit. First, they're going to have to half this lead two nil here at halftime. Get one, and then. Then you can throw even more numbers forward, maybe get something in the box, something happens, force the official to make a decision. They've been lobbying. The lobbying is it's part of the game, the men's game, I don't like as much. It's different than the wins game, the lobbying for the calls. But we'll see what happens here in the second half. Bethany already in one championship today, women's volleyball on the short end of a three sets to nothing loss to Westminster. Could be a good night in New Wilmington because Westminster in the Women's Soccer Championship, they're hosting Chatham University. We can get a little PAC Athletics score for that match happening right now. No score at the half. Yeah, there's activity. Just wanted to make sure, but they are scoreless. And they are also at halftime. Cougars and the Titans, scoreless at the half. Make sure I flip that back over to make sure we're on the right stat sheet. A big thank yous, by the way, to Mitch Morelli, who is the interim sports information director. We offer Mitch congratulations too. He's very close to having his first child, well, his wife would, and uh, Erica Sansom. Sans, um, Sansom, excuse me, from Bethany for her help getting us some information prior to this match. Great hospitality here tonight at Franciscan University. Steubenville home of the great Dean Martin. Yeah, you always like to drop in that. Hey, he's on my <coughs> list of top five singers, so i got to drop that in there. Yeah. Two shots, Ryan Miller. <clears throat> Two shots for Liam Nagel. Those are the leaders for the Barons. 
for the Bison, it is Ursino and Five, both with three shots. That makes sense because they're the two goal scorers, so they've been the most active. 45 down, 45 to go. <clears throat> you got to play from behind of your <clears throat> Franciscan, by the way. For Phi, and Bethany lost 4-2 to two in the beginning of October against Franciscan. That's his second goal of the year for Bethany against Franciscan. For the Barons, they just had the one to nothing victory. They had a 3-2 to victory over Westminster and then had to turn around and play Westminster in the semifinals where Isaac Doyle came off the bench to record the game winner getting here to the championship for the first time. They've got some regrouping to do. As they troop to trail 2-0 here at the half. 44 and clear is the weather report right now in Steubenville. Fans are enjoying it. But an active crowd, a good crowd, great crowd. We would call this SRO. Yeah. So they're standing on the fence across the way, sitting on the hillside, standing on the top of the hill across the way. Pretty good, pretty neat way to spend a Saturday night. Looking at some stats here. Some of this doesn't add up, huh? Two points for a goal. goal. Oh, okay. They're doing it in that way. So that's five hits his seventh of the season. Yeah, we need to readjust. You and I being hockey guys most of the time, just get single points. So, yep, seven goals now for five. That's the second for Sino. Opportunities presented themselves. They took advantage of both of them. One on the PK, the inadvertent handball in the box. That was the five goal. And then the extended corner on the Arsino goal, and he blasted that shot inside the near post. Yeah, that's the right word for inadvertent. Kind of hit something, popped up. Hit his chicken wing that was extended. <clears throat> it was a pretty easy call for the for the referee to make. <clears throat> and as you said, it was the extended corner. It was kicked out, cleared away, but not far enough. On the secondary play, they made a pass right over to Valentin Orsino, and he had just enough space with the right foot to let it fly, and he made no mistake putting it home. In the 20s. Mm, second minute. You know. Talk about Frankie Tall in his third season here, coaching Bethany, five years in assistant, men's soccer, five PAC titles back in the day. Also, five NCAA Division three bursts, which coached women's soccer for one year. 214 wins at North Carolina Wesleyan. Five regular season UAC, USA South Championships, three USA South Tournament Championships, five tournament bursts, and two Sweet 16 appearances. Tall was a two-time PAC All-American, a first-team selection, part of the Bison's 1994 Division III National Championship team. Two-time team MVP, two-time All-Conference, and All-Region. He was at Hudson Valley Community College in Troy, New York. The... Selection, where is it? Monday at NCAA.com will be the selection tournament, I think. Let me make Yes, that was correct. It was Monday. Did you have that? Like, was it... No, I did not write it down, but I Let did remember real... reading it. I'll get it real quick here. Um... Oh, wait, here it is. Yep, there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> PAC is one of 43 conferences granted automatic qualification in Pool A to Division Three Championship. Selections for the 64-team Division Three Championship will be announced Monday, so November 8th at 1.30 p.m. First and second round matchups are scheduled for Friday through Sunday, November 12th through the 14th. I knew I had those 12 or 14 dates in my head, but that's first round action. So Monday at 1.30, the winner of this tournament gets the automatic berth from the PAC in the D3 tournament. So definitely an exciting time for both of these teams. You're 45 minutes away 
from history for either one of these teams. Franciscan looking for their first ever. It's been a long time for Bethany. Coach Tall knows a little bit about their storied history. It's like some of this information is not right in here, or I wrote it, converted it wrong. It says Bethany there is 693-971. I've got them as 971 as well. Well, then that was my mistake. Some of this, when I pasted it, uh, it started doing the math. I think maybe this is just out of order. I think these should just be switched. All righty, fans. It is time no, for the Bethany. second half. They need your support. Let them hear you. Bethany in conference is five and four. So they get, get loud. Finish behind. The Barons are going to move right to left. So they're going to bring their starting lineup back in. So Fairmonte is going to be in, Joe Fairmonte. So they'll attack to the left and go to our right, Jacks Matone in the red and black kit. It'll be the purple and black kit for Addis Salahovic. And the goal to the left as Bethany attacks left to right. Salahovic, four saves. Matone, two so far in this one. Goals by Fai and Ursino for the Bison. <clears throat> they will switch sides now. It's going to be uh, Franciscan Barons moving right to left on your screen. Bison going left to right in the green kit. Guabla will take the opening second half kickoff, the second half kickoff for the Bison. Goals in a minute and 15 seconds span, a PK goal in oh, it's coming extended right at corner. Us. And we're underway. Oh, there's a direct one right off of the open kick down. Trying to connect on the left flank there for the Bison. That was Christian who fired it through. A lot of times you will see the set play off an opening kickoff. There's a steal and a run. That's Puebla. And there is Fontes Candida. Plays it back to Rokiba Cordais, who has stayed on the pitch. Back to Jazino Aguero. And Cordice will go opposite side. There's Ursino has a goal. He'll chip forward. Played by the Bison. We'll try to attack right in front of us as J.P. Boback touched and then ran forward. Schreiner can't play. Counter comes with Pedro Chalemi. Chalemi drops it back to Fai. Fai in the middle of the field. Cordice. Good turn. Gianchetti works middle of the field. Still going left. He'll fire. That's blocked. Nicely on the defensive end by Franciscan. Another shot from distance. Blasting over top the net. Rokibo Cordice. First block was made by Liam Nagel. It was a good turn and run there by a Bison. <clears throat> Got a lot farther than I thought maybe he would on that run. But yeah, again, that it's the, Giancetti. Yeah, the speed and the, the dribbling ability that they have at speed has been very impressive for the Bethany Bison. <clears throat> Ball to flex out, a far touch throw in for Bethany. But then uh, the Bison turn it over, and the Barons going to throw in just two minutes in to the second half. 2 nothing lead for Bethany. And again, the Bison on the attack. They're going to work left flank. Oh, uh, with the speed, speed here down the left side. Well, it's got to be <clears throat> Montez Candida. He's been outstanding with the speed. I think Actually, it's nope, change Chiziba it up. Chiziba James. Yep, it was Chiziba James. James has been... He's been very aggressive moving forward as the left 
uh, outside back, and we've seen it over and over. That time he was leading the attack all the way down to the touchline. He showed the good speed. He put the ball actually towards the net, but Jack's Montone was able to play for Franciscan. There's Fontes Candida. Played off of his foot. Back to Ursino. The freshman center back. He's on the opposite side. His pass up is chested down by Fi. Fi will work it forward. Puebla. Fontes Candida. Left side. Firing blocks. Going to earn a corner. That's a Liam Nagel. And Nagel's hurt. Nagel has a <coughs> brace on that right knee. And he blocked that shot. And came up lame. But he's right back up. But it does earn Bethany a corner. And that'll be their third of the game, first of the second half. We've seen Bethany do this over and over and over. They bring that forward back into the – they drop him deeper with his back to the goal, and then he, he gets a nice first touch, and he lays it off on the flanks, and they've been doing this really well here today. Pedro Chalemi with the service for Bethany. The back header goes wide. Good opportunity in the middle. That's Arsino, I believe, who pinched up off the Chalemi service, but – It'll be a goal kick for the Barons. Now Bethany will organize on the defensive end. Chris, Chris St. George. And the four sets of brothers for the Barons. They'll flip the field to the opposite side. And Franciscan will work right flank. He signed a long through ball for John Schreiner. Uh, defended, though, by... Ursino at a far touchline throw. Barons work it quick to Kohler. And they're going to earn a corner. Yeah, it will be a, will be a corner. We, we assume Nick Miller would take that. I don't pick it up too much. That's actually a low throw. It's going to be a lo- for Lee, Nagel, on, Nagel throw. on a low throw. Way into the box into there. The box. Cordice heads it away for Bethany, and they clear. Great blast! Punched out of there. <laughs> Ripped on the net by Nick Miller. And a punch save by Addis Salahovic. Wow. What a shot by Miller. The pace on that one. High to force Salahovic to make a nice save. High. Force it out for a goal kick. Now we get the corner. Miller. Slides it in to Ryan Miller. Nick to Ryan. Back to Nick. <coughs> Service blocked. Good denial by Bethany. Back point defense to Gianchetti. And Gianchetti has possession. They'll work forward. Montez Candida is over there as... I think it was James maybe pitching up. Who's the other player, actually? Got in the action was uh, Gizino Guerra. Foul called against Bethany. Actually went out of bounds, so a throw for Franciscan. Going towards the crease and in the box playing it is Salahovic, and he slaps hands with his center back, Sheldon Christian. Yeah, Christian kind of was shielding the attacker, allowing Salahovic to come out and pick it up. He didn't want to have to play it in the box with his foot. <clears throat> Montez Candida, middle of the field this time. Good step over oh, the turn. Spin. A little spin move to get space, but defends. And Chris St. George with it. That's Joe Ferramonte, excuse me. The Barons will flip the field far side. Bethany's been pretty good, though, on the attack, the forecheck, the front defense, not allowing anything clean for the Barons in this one. Yeah, the high, the high press has been working well for the Bison. As soon as they lose it, they're using that speed to make life difficult for those backline defenders for the Barons and, and their clearance attempts. On the far side, Gianchetta, middle of the field. They'll come right flank. It's on the show of O'Garo. He'll fire from distance across, headed on the bounce. The save made by Jax Mottone off the header from Arnold Fontes Candida. Yeah, the high service bent it right into the box, the header attempt. Pushed it down low, but then the save. Here's a nice overlapping at Tom. Good play defensively by Rokiva Cordice. Actually, it's going to be a Barons 
Or a, yeah. A, it's going to uh, be for the bison. bison throw. So that's well played right in front of their bench. Both teams, but more specifically, and I think because they're more active up and down the bench, really good communication from the bench. And, of course, the Bison are more active because they're up 2-0. Sure. <laughs> With Coach Tall, assistant coach Chris Cordon, and the student assistant Thomas Navaria. They've been the better team. It's been hard to believe that they were the five seed, right? They're going to make this run. Yeah, they kind of crashed the party if you're looking at seeds. Has knocked off top seeded Grove City. And also a quarterfinal victory or fourth seeded Chatham. So looking to knock off three higher seeds on a way to a PAC championship. Barron's turned it over. So we're in the 54th minute of play. Two first half tallies for Bethany. They'll do Fi and Valentino Sino. They've held on to that lead since the 24th minute. Gianchetti. James. Jaziba James back to Gianchetti. Inside the right corner. He'll fire. That's blocked away nicely defensively by Franciscan. That header by Joe St. George. Does result in a far side throw in across the way for Bethany. And another throw as they move incrementally, incrementally forward, as you see teams do. We're in the 55th minute. <clears throat> well, they work low left goal line, but they run out of room. That should be a goal kick for Franciscan. It will be. Franciscan will work along the defensive back line. They'll run up the near side. They'll play it out of bounds, though. And they're going to call a foul and a good sportsmanship as Puebla slaps hands as he kind of hip checked Chris St. George. Well, the Barons trying to probe and dissect and find some space here against this Bison defense that kind of plays it with their quickness. Right there's an example of just closing down that space so quickly when that pass is made. Sheldon Christian will come to the near side with some room for J.P. Boback. He'll dribble to the right, still goes right, but he's defended nicely by Cordice, and it will be Rokiba Cordice. To start the counterattack, he'll fire it with the right foot across the way to Pontes Candida. Nice overlap right there. Yeah, he's got that right. Jaziba James. James up ahead. And that's Puebla. His pass, though, intercepted. Counter for Bobak. He'll switch fields. That's Kohler. Sebastian Kohler. Up. Uh, just pulled up limp lane. There's uh, Gianchetti, Fausto Gianchetti. I think he might have to come out there. He's holding his Kohler, hamstring. by the way, was first team all PAC in the spring when he had six goals and three assists. The last year's season took place in the spring because of COVID. You got it right because we're looking for subs to come in. Gianchetti. We would assume he'd be the guy to check out. There's a steal again. J.P. Bobak, third straight possession. He's had the ball. Played back to Nagel on the defensive line. Siskin will also have a sub getting ready to check in. Mikey, you got in for I think you got a sub? Mikey Irvin. For the Barons, for the Bison, Romero Vega will be your subs. Ref's calling a sub over here. Ref's calling a sub. The 
This will be a throw on the far touch line. I think it's going to be Nagel again. Last time he got it well into the box with the throw. Works it in, headed away, though, defensively by the Bison. Nagel heads it into the box. Still loose in the box. A whiff on a clear, but a second opportunity cleared out by Bethany. All the way back to the back line for Josh Atkinson to Jax Mottone. And they'll s- slip field. They'll reverse field for the right side. They've been side for Bowback. They've been attacking right side. That through ball slips all the way through. And a dramatically reenacted save by Addis Salahovic. <laughs> He's pounced on it as if there was three or four attackers around right. him. Well, that's what you want. You want to do it aggressively. You're going to hold it. You're going to uh, allow some precious time to tick off there when you can. But he's feeling confident back there right now. Bow back and a good switch. Oh, the shoulder. <clears throat> it was Chris St. George who was leveled. That was Rokiba Cordes that came way over to make the foul. We're going to get the subs. We got an injury player down. But probably maybe Gonchetta back down. Or Gianchetti, excuse me. And then we're going to get a free kick for Franciscan. Almost acting like a corner, so good opportunity on the set piece for the Barons. The whistle actually went over. Like, he whistled over top of it. Yeah, he just wanted to. It's not. I don't think it is Gianchetta who's. Or, excuse me, Gianchetti is down. And now trainers have obstructed my view now. Fourteen was down. Yeah, that's uh, Gizino Aguero. He's up and off. So Gianchetta, Gianchetti will stay in. Viega, is, he's been set to check in. Yeah, As G- is Mikey Irving. But- Giancetti was the one that was grabbing his le- his left leg, I thought for sure, but he seems to be running okay right well, I now. I saw a four, that's what I thought, but <clears throat> stretched out. Aguero looks okay. He's right in front of us. There's the service. Slides uh, through, the- and it's in! Oh, Francisco! Well, it was a low screamer with the right foot, and it got past the first wall, and there was a lot of traffic there right on the six-yard box, and somebody poked that one home. We're going to have to wait for official confirmation. It was Miller who took the service as he does with the set pieces. Get loud, fans. Get loud. 59th minute. Joe Firamonti. We're saying. Leo, did you have Firamonti on the touch? Right. Yeah, we're having some question on who had the touch in front there. Uh, the SID kind of spotted for me. Thought it was Joe Firamonti. We we're, were trying to get the official confirmation from somebody. There was a whole bunch of bodies there on that uh, free kick. But it just dangerously got past Salahovic. It was Firamani. We got confirmation. So it's Joe Firamani. It was 31.03 on the clock there. So put that into. A senior from Manassas, Virginia, gets his first of the year. It's huge. Cuts the lead in half, 2 1. And we've got a. 59th minute. Brand new script being written. That's off a free kick in the 59th minute. And now we've got some energy. Not only on the bench, but in the crowd here at Franciscan. We're going to get a card, I believe. There's no card. He reached into his pocket, but he's just. He has a good conversation. Making sure he had his card keys. Probably be a good idea to hit that remote start, right, if you got it set up for 
to have the heat on when you get yes, there. It would. There's another free kick. This time it's right flank, though. Can the Barons take advantage of it back to back? They'll flip it to the near post, headed in front. Turn, loose, clear. Almost a back heel opportunity. Back out, Joe St. George. Near side, cross. Slides out the other side, and it'll be played by Joseba James. Joe St. George, or excuse me. Puebla at the 18, trying to dribble in. Tackled. Good job from behind on the tackle, and it's played by Jax Matone. Definitely got some energy going here in Steubenville for the Barons after that goal in the 59th minute. Good play. Really great acrobatic defensive play there by Christian to deny a through ball for Kohler, but Kohler has it left wing. Kohler steps left, moves left, stops near the goal line. Spins right, slides right. Turning shot right on. The save made by Salahovic. It was a good first touch. Unfortunate. He had to go with his weaker left foot there. Couldn't get as much power on that could Joe Firamonte, the goal scorer. As you were describing the action, I was searching for the stats. That's his first of the season. And I said that. you got to pay attention to your partner. I could have just flipped that over. I got them. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I thought I was being helpful. You are helpful. Everyone's helpful. Well, you are blocking the heater, though. But <laughs> I'm not being helpful for you. But I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a hog and a heat hog today, not a sweat hog, but a heat hog. Oh, going down hard That's there, Joe St. George. George. That's just a 50-50 ball what? collision with five. He's kind of holding his face. One of his hit his jaw caught the shoulder five. They're saying play on. As Matone has it at the at the goal. Quite certain the chilly temperatures add into those. Oh, it can't feel good. It can't feel good on the header or hitting the turf. Unless you numb up, right? Oh, good, good back. back heel. And that's Jonathan Schreiner. Played up. And it's going to be Puebla. He'll slide right in front of us. Puebla goes one-on-one with Josh Atkinson, but he runs out of bounds. Middle of the field, Cordice. Surveying. And he'll reverse. One or be since it became 2-1. Kevin yeah. will see any strategy changes for Bethany. They turn it over. Chested on by Sebastian Kohler. Good play, though. Great right foot by Cordice to intercept the pass. Right footed forward by Chris St. George. Well, the pace has picked up since this goal went in for the Barons, and their urgency has increased also. Obviously, with 26-20 to go on the clock. On their home field, the crowd is trying to urge them on, and we're going to get this long free kick right yeah, here. right inside of midfield. They'll go short and work it forward. And then they'll go right side, the Barons. The There's cross. the service. They got it through there. Couldn't quite get a clean deflection on. I gotta think it was Joe Faramonte. There were three white jerseys right there. Just could not put any power behind that header. But I like the way they did it with the, sh the the short touch. Moved it forward, got a little closer. It was an excellent cross that went into the box there. Great service. Just not could not put it home. <laughs> we're in the 65th minute of play. Two goals for Bethany in the first half by Fi and Ursino. Joe Faramonte has the goal. Younger brother Justin is at the check-in for Joe right in front of us. As is Isaac Doyle for Franciscan. Well, that's the cool thing being here. You can hear the communication and telling the players, you got room, turn. Right. 
get yeah. a, it's better than when we're up in the press box. I think I get a little mesmerized listening to to uh, that communication. On, yeah, but it brings you an interesting yeah. aspect of the of the game and how it takes place on the pitch, more so than us when we're up high. I like the attack of the Baron since the goal went in. It's been so much better. I agree. They've got spark. They've got life from that. Yep. We do get it. the oil with Justin Fairmont in. That's why I like one recovered basketball three, to get courtside George. because you get the same deal, better communication. And six, Justin Fiermont. You're closer to the huddles when that four, happens. So kind of is able to keep better. You keep better the pulse when you're down low. Service from the far side. Oh. Deflect. And on the line. They never got to the line, but that's going to be a foul against... The foul is going to go against Mikey Irvin. A goal, a tying equalizer. The equalizing goal was stopped by a defender for the Bison who's down on the turf. He put his James. body. I think it's 38. He was there, not quite at the line, Kevin, but if he's not there, I think that goes in. Oh, it absolutely goes in, for sure. He made a, he tied, he made a save, a stop of the equalizer. That was going in for sure, no doubt. As Giancetti is now down on the pitch stretching. You saw him earlier. So we're going to get a stoppage with 23.58 on the clock here in the second half. It'll be Christian back there defending as well. But a great sequence and a great spark for Franciscan after scoring in the 59th minute. They've kind of pushed the play since they made it 2-1. to one. They've kind of dictated the pace. Yeah, they, they certainly have. They've had more possession. They've been pushing the attack. They look much better on the attack. Trying to get the, the Bison look a little bit more disorganized at the attack. You know, you got to try to close out a game. We've seen it. When you're facing a, quote, elimination, you know, the urgency kicks in. You can't manufacture that urgency. All of a sudden, those passes are a little better. And we're, you're trying to close out a championship victory, you know, you got to stay composed there. The hardest thing to do is to close it out. The injured player, Fausto Gianchetti, comes out. First appearance tonight for the sophomore forward, Salvador Isler, from La Plata, Argentina. He's got the ball in midfield. <clears throat> Good play by Liam Nagel. And a through ball. Sebastian Kohler. His pass out of the reach of Nick Miller. Nice job playing it out wide and trying to come down this left side. It just kind of that final link up in the final in the that last link up in the final third where we're trying to get that cross made. The Bison are not yet in time killing mode because this one's still in doubt with 22, just under 23 minutes remaining. You want to be smart, but you're right. You don't want to just yeah, in the 66th abandon, minute, you, abandon you, your, your plan. Yeah. You just can't be thinking we're going to possess it, we're going to possess it, we're going to kill it. <clears throat> still over 22 minutes. Touch on a left side organization coming on the attack and stepping to the inside. Arnold Fontes Candida. He'll play it back. Cordice, middle of the field. Modu Fai. Fai. That's got to be a. He was leaning on him. Call. He certainly was. That was Lucas Puebla. Puebla. Had a great space with his, with his body. He was leaning back on the defender and kind of fell, trying to draw one inside the box. Ooh. Call to call against Chizino Aguero. Free kick for the Barons. And there goes the service from Nick Miller. Denied as they had a run through by Isaac Doyle. Miller served to the box and it was cleared away on a near side throw in for Franciscan. 
a low throw. That'll be Sebastian Kohler on the throw. Gets it in, slides out, Ooh. and they do get a chip, but over top the net it goes. That shot attempt by Mikey Irvin. They found something the Barons have, Kevin, in the second half. They're feeling confident, too. They keep telling their players it's coming, it's coming. So they feel like the pressure, the sustained pressure that they've been applying is going to get breakthrough, and they're going to find the equalizer. they got 21 minutes remaining to do so. Yep, we're in the 70 minute, 70, 70 minute of play. 2-1 lead for the Bison. Missler will play it back and quickly play it away by Oguero. Intercepted in the counter, long through ball. That's played by Ursino. He won't let it sneak through. As Boback was up there. Be a far side throw in for the Bison as we're inside of 20 minutes to go in the second half. Franciscan trying to win their first ever PAC title. The Bison trying for number 31, but the first since 01. Comes the counter. Room for Sebastian Kohler. Missler, though, denied. And also playing back there. Five. You can hear them telling Miller yeah, to reverse. switch the other way. Switch to the right side. Oh, it's a box. It snuck through. It's just, I think that's surprised. Yeah. The Baron attacker. I think you're right. Just kind of an awkward first touch. Could not get it under control because it hit his foot and kind of hopped. It was Justin Fairmont, and I think he was assuming that that was going to be played away. Right. And it caught him by surprise. It does result in a far side throw in, far touch line throw in for the Barons. Irvin cleared away from Mikey Irvin. Kept alive, pushed forward by Doyle. That's Kohler. He'll work left side. And it'll be a throw in for the Bison. This one puts it up in the air. Ryan Miller will play it down. Another throw for Bethany. That deflection made it over the fence, heading for the woods. We are nestled along the Ohio here in Steubenville, Franciscan University. Across the way, a coal part of this venue as well on this campus is the big water tower. Just to the left corner, there's a great drive by James from distance, right footed. Strong but high and wide. The water tower and the colors. It's white with the green Franciscan University. So easy to spot. Kind of adds to the venue here. Starting in for the Barons, number four, Joseph Firamonte. Joe Firamonte is in. He's nine, got the only Michael goal Irvin. for Franciscan. <clears throat> They've gone short goal kick every time. They did it again. They do not fly it forward. They... Work to the outer bank, the outer backs, and set up. Kind of wishing we were in the outer banks. <laughs> it might not be as cold there. Cal, a foul whistled against Cordice as he knocked down Schreiner. Middle of the field opportunity for Nick Miller from about 40 yards out. Dead center, so that's where you want to be. He's telling his attackers to pinch in. He had that strong hit not long ago. That would have been a golazo if that one would have went in from distance. He's got some, he's got some options on the side there. Go right foot it on frame, and the save made by Addis Salahovic. Got it over the attacking line and the defending line, but Salahovic was able to see it, track it, and save it. Yeah, that was hit well. <clears throat> Just. 
there was enough time for the for the keeper Salahovic to to track it and make an easy save, but he was able to get it from distance over the wall under the bar, so properly hit. But the keeper Salahovic was able to just come over and calmly jump up and make that save. Another throw for Bethany, the women's championship game. They've got some action. They were scoreless at the half. It's three three in the seventy seventh minute. Wow. There's a lot of goals finding the old onion bas- in the onion bag in the second half. Six goals. Chip in the service. Left side, right side. Jax Maton is going to play. He'll roll it out. Chance for the Barons to push forward. As we're in the 75th minute of play. 15, 40 clock turn, second half. Chip to the far side. Franciscan will... Organize at the back line. Middle of the field for Liam Nagel. There's Miller. Miller serves. Oh. Through ball to flex. It's going to be a push forward. A short pass. Kohler. That's well defended by Cordice. Yeah, nice short area pass right there. Just could not get the, the last touch he needed to put the shot on frame. It was Kohler and Schreiner, I believe working. We're going to get another foul against Franciscan. Into the 76th minute. No surprise, they were second in the conference in fouls, so that shows you how aggressive they are. This will be Nick Miller from inside the far touch line, I believe. Well, Nick Miller's at, at halftime, that service, he's at half at midfield, I should say. No, it was Nick Miller. It was 18 in the middle of the field in Atkinson. Makes sense. Miller's taking every other set piece. Is it automatically stopped or starts on the five minutes? For the winning team. A low goal kick that time. That was a strange choice there by Strategy Salahovic. By. Salahovic. Brent Reidenauer with Sebastian Kohler. They call him Seb. Cleared away. Now you're getting to the point, Kevin, as we're under 14 minutes left in the second half where you could think potentially milk the clock and play defensively over Bethany. You don't want to expose your flank in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, but they've been on the they've been on the, the defensive. Yeah, they've been on the back foot for a while now. As the Barons have been putting them under pressure, here's a long throw into the box, a little bit of a nudge with the hip into the goalkeeper, Salahovic, right there. But Salahovic had it played. He had the arms outstretched. It kept him outstretched. Adding to the drama, Elvis Addis Salahovic from Dallas, Texas. Salahovic has made eight saves in this one. Three for Jack Smothstone. Two on Bethany. They got their goals in the first half. Joe Ferramonti, the only goal for Franciscan here in the 59th minute. Late whistle, foul against Bethany. The student assistant, he is up. (laughs) He got admonished. Yes, he got reprimanded for coming off the bench. That was fantastic. Right back to... Nick Miller, services defended by Bethany. Francisco will work with Isaac Doyle. He's got room. He's got Kohler. Kohler works left to right. Cutting in on the right foot. This pass blocked by Cordice. Rokiva Cordice has been pretty effective since he checked in late in yeah. the first half. He's been really pretty active on the back line. Real tall player has been a good defensive mid for them. He seems to be sitting right in front of those two center backs and playing the six and uh, covering a lot of space with his long legs and tall frame right, right there. there. He's cleaning up a mess again, getting it forward. There's the holding forward right there, back to the frame. Good turn. Puebla. Leaves it, Montez Candida and Isler. That's going to be played by Franciscan. 
<coughs> Kohler hustling back, but Isler will play it back. O'Garo finds a man down the middle of the field. That's a run by Fye. He'll shoot. He scores! Second of the game by Modu Fye. 3 1 Bison. Oh, Bethany. 79th minute. Five second of the game, eighth of the year. I believe the service was from O'Garo, 14. We'll check that in a second. It was well played, and Five was able to take it, and then he just kind of used the screen of uh, Puebla. Puebla just kind of stood his ground. He did not get in his way, and he was able to run past. Puebla created a little bit of space for Fi to come down there and slot it just inside that left post to give the Bison a 3-1 to one lead in the 79th minute. Well, when we talked to the coaching staff before the game, Frankie Tall mentioned Modu Fi as one of their top players. He has delivered for the second time tonight. Now the Bison are 11-15 away from their 31st PAC men's soccer title. Santiago Brunei is, is, uh, has come in to be a fifth defender on the back line. So they're definitely making the substitutions here to, to get ready to defend for this final 11 minutes. Certainly back up with a two-goal lead. You can do that as we're in the 80th minute of play. Going to go unassisted on the second Phi goal. Well, now Modu Phi can look for an HT. It could have been Isler right there that made that pass. Let's try hey, to he think. made the play. He either got it back <coughs> to O'Gara, and I thought it was O'Gara who served it back in the middle because Isler, I think, went back, and then it went forward. It was one of those two. And, again, Phi doing some moving on his own, and you mentioned a good clear out by Puebla to create space. That ball's going to squirt back to the goal, and Alice Addis Salahovic. Yeah, Puebla kind of he shifted and he stood still like he would on a wall, and it just allowed Fi to use him. The best analogy I can think of is like a basketball screen, you know, coming over the screen, creating a little bit of space for your shot. That Puebla just created that space for Fi to run past him, and he just slotted it home past the diving Matone for the third goal of this match, and it's going to be tough for the Barons to get two to equalize here in the final nine and a well, half Bethany minutes. Bethany withstood the attack, and Francisco got a marker to make it 2-1, and they pushed the play for about 20 minutes. And, and, and Bruni's been put right into the mix there. Santiago Bruni playing the center. <laughs> he's got, They're coming at him a couple times, and he's kind of jogging up this, the park right now. They're trying not to get too high to keep that back line deep. Cordice had it. They go back. Fi will come near side to Santiago Brunei. Again from Buenos Aires. Another one of the Argentinians. There he is. Well, he's certainly going to warm up quickly, right? Yeah. <laughs> Comes right in, and he's been very active as a center back. That is Kohler, defended by Brunei. Here's Puebla again. Oh, he's going to make a misplay, and he's got on the front foot. He's got 1v1. Hustle, though, by Atkinson, and he makes the play. Great back defense and a hustle by Josh Atkinson to recover. Yeah, Atkinson was on his horse with the speed, but I think he read it well where he thought he was going to go back to the right foot for the shot. There was a lot of room to the left. we got another bison down. we got another attack. Near side, Schreiner. I think that player is down. Is Vagon? I think he thought he was fouled. I thought he stepped awkwardly on the ball. Well, he's committing to it now. If he's not really hurt, he's committed and to now it. Now Bethany does get possession, and they stop the clock with 7:53 to go.
Well, look at and almost all the players. Yeah, you're going to say the keepers all the yes. way out here. Salahovic ran yeah. all the way out. He recognized that he needed stretched. <laughs> We're going to get J.P. Bobak checking back in. There's 7.53 on the clock as they attend to the player that's down. we got a player being stretched out to our left as well for Bethany. In, I'm guessing Gregorio Lopez Ogawa is going to check in because he's he's running, running some couple, sprints. Yeah, 15 yard sprints to our left. Player who was stretched out, I believe, it was the player who made the play on the goal line, which was Jazino Ogaro, made that play. That, that is sneaker, James. That, that would have made down. it two-two, correct? Yes. That play that Ogaro made at the near post to our left. Yes, that was. Zeba James that was down. Okay, he's stretched out. He's going to come off. There's a lot of moving parts here right now between some subs, some injuries. That's right. Sixteen had the ball. And now, Lopez Agal lost his shoe as he got ready to check in. 16 had the ball. That should be the correct call. We had the ball. Yeah. We had the ball. That's what I'm saying. We had the ball. Why are they getting it? We had the ball. They're consulting with you on who has possession. That's. <laughs> You did. Yeah. There, they gave it to you. They're gonna see. You got the ball. I'm in it. You, you I'm got. In it. You officially got I'm in, in it all the way. <clears throat> you were consulted. But it was um, Pueblo had the ball. Regardless, we're inside of seven and a half minutes. Quick throw in, quickly keyed in by Kohler. Now you got to have the urgency of your Franciscan. Down by a pair. Late. Credit, credit to you for seeing the numbers on these jerseys for the Barons. Light on light is difficult. Here's a counter for the Bison. It's Lopez Agawa. It hasn't been easy. You can get a, a certain thing off the lights on this. Uh, I've pricked out knee braces and gloves and things. Oh, uh, see, that's Like Shriner on the attack. Trip. Cooler shot blocked. They're stretching out. When they stretched out, it's interesting because Jay Zeba James, I'm pretty sure that's got electrolytes, but it looked like a melted yes, frozen popsicle. popsicle stick. Yeah. Where they the little the plastic package. sleeve when you're a but kid. I'm pretty sure that's got some electrolytes like yeah. a sports drink because he cramped up, but that's what it looked like. It was one that was not in the freezer. <laughs> it's more fun to think it's one of those frozen or melted well, sure. popsicle what things. What kids but... doesn't like that, right? <laughs> Even when they're not frozen. There's the counterattack. They slide it through. They can't find Fi as Fontes Candida tried to find him left side for the HT. Played up by Puebla. That one's heading towards the grill, that loose ball. We're in the 85th minute of play. <laughs> Bethany leading 3-1. to one. They'll slide it near side to Isaac Doyle. Now, whatever you do if you're Bethany, if you concede a goal, you certainly want to make Franciscan earn it. You right. don't want to give a cheap one up. And make them work for it, which they have been doing. There's room, right side. Chips, slices oh. wide. Salahovic might have got a piece on the quick touch. It's going to be a corner. That went wide that of the post. Off the right foot of Schreiner. Off the service, I believe, by Miller. It will be a near side corner and another set piece opportunity for Franciscan as we tick towards five minutes remaining. 
That looked really promising. I thought he was going to tuck it in that corner. Here's the corner kick. From Sal Hovick was it even looking. He turned his attention, Kevin. We saw the he just turned it to the attackers, which were standing to his left. And he didn't even watch the flight of the ball. So they got opposite side corner now. So back to back, this one from the far side. Here comes the service. That time he had his eye on it. Went up for the punch save. We're going to get another three consecutive corners. <laughs> the cor- left side, right side, left side. The corner taker has sprinted from along the goal line. That time it's cleared by the Bison. That is with a header by O'Garro at the near post. Yeah, O'Garro with a good clear, but here's the attack again. Kohler, he'll slide it near side. The chip. Uh, and it's read by Salahovic. And Addis Salahovic is on top of it again. Bracing the ball like you would a pillow. Watching a late night TV show. <laughs> and he ticks it down towards four minutes. Cordy Silver, so there's Aguero pushing up. Surprising to see him push up. They have to the shift the back minute. line now. Here he comes sprinting back. Their speed is impressive to see. I agree with I'm you. I'm not saying Franciscan's slow, but it's just been noticeable. And it's three to one, but if you're sprinting up, you yeah. better sprint back, right? <laughs> Long through ball, Salahovic again with the embrace. Monday, 1.30, the NCAA Division Three pairings come out. Bethany looking to get to that tournament for the first time since 01. I just realized the benefits of this student assistant from Argentina. He speaks their language. He was shouting out instructions for him. Good turn. turn yes. Save at the far post by Puebla. Puebla fired. Good save by Jax Martone to keep it 3-1. Really nice turn by Lucas Puebla. Isn't there a universal language for shot, soccer? Sure, there has to be. With you think about some of the club teams in Europe and all the nationalities and languages they speak, that one was coming right see, for us. You put your left hand up to protect your partner. See, well, you were probably more so protecting yourself. I was judging I pre- the flight. I appreciate. I appreciate you putting the left hand up. As I well. was judging the flight. I thought I could push that one wide. And they push forward. The Barons down two two twenty clock turns in this one. The Bison. Are 215 away from a PAC men's soccer championship. They're in overtime in the women's soccer championship in Westminster. Westminster. Chatham and Westminster are tied at three. Ball chested down in midfield by Rokiba Cordice. Again, holding target forward with his back to the frame. It's Puebla. Puebla's. He's been that all night. That's been his job to be that target forward. Here's O'Gara on the on the right side down the. Oh, he pushed it towards the net. We're gonna get a corner for the Bison, and they're gonna take their good old time here with ninety seconds. seconds. Coach Tall saying good time. Coach Cordon having a good time with the student assistant Thomas Novaria. They can feel it. They're a minute 15 away. They're calling for a short corner in possession. Well, they've already they got off by 27 seconds by just waiting to take that corner. 20, yeah, it's about 23. We're going to tick to a minute. Final minute. Comes your way. Nope, they stopped the clock with 102. The Bison are ready to sprint off the the bench here. Oh! Back into a bicycle. Opportunity. What a nice piece of skill right there. Back to frame. That was uh, Fontes Candina with a nice touch off the chest. And he's trying to go up and over just... He did it well. He just put it over the frame. Bench is feeling it now, and they lost the key player early in Sebastian Arrow Kane, and he's not put any 
He's jumping around, but on the left foot, not the right foot. Half a minute to the championship for the Bethany Bison. you got to hope for their sake that Eric Kane is going to be able to play in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, next weekend. 20 seconds. Last chance for the Barons. It's going to be a quick throw for the Barons. We're at 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it, the Bethany Bison. For the first time since 2001, our champions, they win the 2021 